We'll share with you a heartwarming story about one woman who rescued her four-legged friend and is making some money off of the story. And our lawmakers are discussing priorities for the beginning of the legislative season for the state. Good evening and welcome to One Easy Today. I'm Kyle Benedict. Thanks for joining us. Well, our top story tonight, Flagstaff Police is looking for information regarding a telephone scam that took place earlier this week. Some residents in the city of Flagstaff received phone calls from a long-distance number with a person on the other line identifying themselves as a lieutenant with Coconino County Sheriff's Office. The scammer then used the information from law enforcement offices to convince people that they had been caught on photo radar and owe money. They were identifying information um, like such as <clears throat> Judge Bayall and, uh, and using uh, our traffic court judge's name um, saying, saying that the information was coming out, out of their court and also using uh, telephone numbers belonging to the sheriff's office and or police department. Now, for the record, there are no photo radars set up in the city of Flagstaff by law enforcement. And the Flagstaff the Police Department wants to assure people that this is not their authentic method to their procedures. At no time will Coconino County Sheriff's Office or Flagstaff Police Department be soliciting um, fines or money from anybody. The area code of the phone number seems to be coming out of the White Mountains. If you have any more information regarding this phone scam, contact Flagstaff Police Department. And the, 55th, the 51st Arizona State Legislature begins on Monday. And with that in mind, local leaders met Thursday with state lawmakers to set an agenda. And now NAZ Today's Imani Payne joins us and she found out about some of the regional priorities. Imani, what can you tell me about some of those priorities? Well, you know, Kyle, it turns out that Flagstaff is one of very few rural communities that invites their representatives to come and hear their concerns. Now, we had an opportunity to find out about that conversation as District 6 State Senator Chester Crandall joined us in the studio today. Welcome, Senator. Well, let's um, get right into it. We know from city officials that we used to receive $7 million to be used for things like the Highway User Revenue Fund, which has now been cut down to $6 million. Many city leaders have expressed they don't feel we are receiving a fair share. So I have to ask you, where did the extra money go, and how do you plan to address these demands? Well, that's a, that's a very good question, and that's one that I've been working on since I was elected uh, uh, three years ago. Uh, what happened when the downturn of the economy came in order to uh, uh, keep some of the agencies up and running, particularly DPS, uh, there was a, a conscious shift of, of her funding into the DPS department to uh, keep the highway patrol up and running, to uh, keep the highways safe and, and so on. Uh, there was a lot of other funds that were shifted in that. Now that the economy has started, uh, last year we worked very hard to restore some of that funding. It did restore some of that funding. Uh, this year we're in the process of, of restoring uh, the rest of that uh, back into the HERF fund so that uh, the cities and towns can get back uh, whole uh, in that fund. Uh, here again, in a budget year and some of the things that are happening, I, I can't promise that's what's going to, to take place, but that's one of the things that we're working on and a top priority for uh, for uh, me as a, a state senator. Nice, and further, a big concern for us here in rural Arizona is the restoring and thinning of our forests, not on federal, but state land, of course. So we want to know, um, what is your initiative and thoughts on how to get the state more involved in helping to prevent and protect us from future forest fires? Well, that's one of, you know, that's a biggie that needs to be in. We need to, we need to get back to uh, uh, some of the free enterprise that we used to have back in the uh, before the 80s and, and we had all the issues with the, the spotted owl and so on where people were actually in the forest logging and doing some of those uh, things to help keep the forest cleaned up. Uh, Forfry, uh, which is a federal initiative, is supposed to be up and running and I would like to see us, uh, the state, do some uh, uh, partnering with, with that uh, uh, group so that we can y y so that we have the ability to uh, maximize our funding uh, and uh, piggyback with them and the same contractors that are working near in the forest uh, could also then uh, take over a state contract to, to accomplish some of the same things. It's a huge issue. It's one that uh, we need to fix and we need to take care of. Uh, but here again, it takes uh, a lot of money to be able to do that. And if we could get back to the free enterprise part of that, I think would help get where we needed to be. Great, and real quick, can you tell us about some of your top legislative priorities? I think my top priority this year is uh, uh, looking at the uh, funding formula for K-12 education. Uh, 
That formula has been in place since 1980, and we've had a lot of changes take place since then. There, the assessed valuation of the state has uh, really changed. Uh, it's not as uh, constant across the state as it used to be, and so we need to look at how we do that. We have the charter school system that has come up, and we fund them differently than we do the traditional schools, and so we need to go back and, and look at uh, funding, as the Constitution says, as uniformly as possible. And so I will be working on some legislation to uh, redo that funding formula. Nice. Well, thank you for coming down. And we look forward to hear the progress being made on these issues the next time you're in the city of Flagstaff. You have an open invitation, definitely. Thank you very and much. And for NAZ Today, I'm Imani Payne. Coming up, a state parks director asks, what can we do to preserve historic properties? Welcome back. Well, we've all heard the stories about someone rescuing a dog, and they're usually heart-wrenching stories and often end on a positive note. Today, we'd like to introduce you to a Prescott Valley woman who recently rescued an abused pit bull. What's special is that not only did she come to his rescue, she wrote a popular book about the experience. Nancy Harrison shares the heartwarming story. It's a key, buddy. Meet Buddy. Can I go see your friends? Buddy spent more than a year locked up in a cage at the Yavapai County Humane Association, hoping someone would adopt him. Buddy came in and he was really shut down. He had an abused, abused background. Buddy's future wasn't looking good. Then along came Linda Riddle. I saw how sad and broken he was. And he would walk toward me with his head tilted. And it was like he was trying to tell me to help him. Take me, take me. This is where Linda's book comes into our story. Recently released and offered for sale on Amazon, The Adventures of Buddy tells his story from his perspective, walking readers through his life, beginning at the shelter to today at his loving home with Linda and Gus, her other dog. Linda insists the message within her book applies not only to dogs, but also children. If they're in an abusive situation, being bullied, that there is hope. For NAZ Today, I'm Nancy Harrison. This is as good as it gets. Reardon Mansion is the only state park within the Flagstaff city limits, and today it hosted representatives from the Arizona State Parks who have traveled here for a listening tour. And as you today, Sierra Ferguson joins us now. Sierra, what exactly is a listening tour? Well, Kyle, in recent years, our state parks have taken some serious financial blows. In 2007, the state's budget for maintaining parks was about $81 million. Today, that figure has plummeted to $22 million. So folks like Brian Martin, the executive director of state parks, are traveling to sites like our very own Rudin Mansion to assess their financial burdens and future needs. Reardon State Park is another thing that we can offer to tourists, and the locals as well, but tourists especially. And so if I come to Flagstaff, what is there to do and what is there to see? Well, definitely the Reardon State Park. Um, I have a mandate from the governor to run state parks like a business. So the first thing I had to do was look at, well, how are we doing? And uh, based on our current model, I'm, I'm really pleased to say that uh, we're doing very, very well. We run at about almost 75% self-sufficiency, meaning we, we almost are almost self-supportive. The national average for state parks is 45%. So we're doing uh, very well running as a business. Historic parks historically don't make a lot of money and I need to figure out how to keep the doors open for the whole agency. There's been some talk about, well, maybe the state would just divest itself of some of these historical state parks and just, you know, give it to the city, let the city worry about it. You know, I'm not sure, so sure that's the best way to handle it. Uh, and so I'm glad to see that the state has said, no, we're going to 
continue to own it, operate it, maintain it especially. These communities have stepped up when we were on uh, in dire, dire straits. They stepped up and helped out uh, either contributing money or actually running the whole park for us and that's a very big deal and we're very appreciative of that and the partnership we have with Flagstaff is a model of how uh, the cities and a state agency can work together to drive economies of that community but also keep the the mantra out there of the the product that Arizona State Parks is. Welcome back meteorologist Lee Bourne will let us know if this warm weather trend will continue. Hi. I bought Pepsi Next. What's Pepsi Next? It's the latest cola from Pepsi. It's got real cola taste, but 60% less sugar. Real cola taste, 60% less sugar. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I know. It's unbelievable. But, yeah. but this is the most impressive mm. thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. Oh, definitely. Oh. Look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had anything like it. Oh, my parents are going to Yeah, yes. they're going to be so proud. Pepsi Next. Drink it to believe it. All right, some cloud cover thickening up out there this afternoon, continuing into the evening. A weak storm system moving through the inner mountain west. And here we take a look at it on the satellite, bringing a little bit of snow to the high deserts of Nevada, some snow into the Wasatch, and they could certainly use it. They've been under the same dry spell we are, and the storm system is going to stay to the north of us here in Arizona. It's going to bring some decent snowfall to the western slope of Colorado. They could use the snow as well. Unfortunately, the storm system is going to miss the Sierras. California is very dry. Sierra snow packs at only 20% of average, but it's the storm track. It's going over the top of Pacific high pressure and then down the Intermountain West. This is a very weak storm system. It's going to stay to the north of us. Maybe just a few light sprinkles up around the four corners. So today's temperature is not as warm as where we were yesterday. 47 degrees is our high temperature in Flagstaff today. Still a little bit above average for this time of year. Here's a look at it on the Pacific Satellite. And I want to show you this just because this huge ridge of high pressure is building in again. And it's going to be the main player for us here over the next week or so. And notice the storm track up over the top of it and this thing's going to expand across the whole eastern Pacific Basin and keep storms away from us for at least the next week plus or so. And so over the weekend, we kind of continue with the storm track through the Rockies and a little bit of a cool northerly breeze with the exception of Saturday, which looks like the warmest day. And we'll show you that in a second. 19 degrees overnight tonight. Partly cloudy skies continue for tomorrow. Mostly sunny skies, 47 degrees. We get into Saturday and we're in much warmer conditions. Then cool northerly winds settle in late in the weekend for a Friday round out the week. 61 in Sedona, 49 Tuba City, 51 in Winslow and 69 degrees in Phoenix. OK, here's a look at the extended forecast. The warmest day being Saturday back into the low mid 50s, a little bit cooler with a northerly breeze on Sunday and then Monday and Tuesday. High pressure is in charge. It's all sunshine and we'll get into a warming trend as we make our way all the way through next week. So for you down in Sedona, here's a look at your temperatures. It's mostly sunny each and every day. And on Friday, we already talked about your high temperature in the low 60s, mid 60s on Saturday. Gorgeous day to get down to Sedona and enjoy some of the warm temperatures. Temperatures cool off a little bit late in the weekend and then we'll see temperatures back in the mid upper 60s by mid next week. So this dry spell just keeps on going and we're three weeks now and counting with no precipitation. All right, Kyle, back over to you. Thanks a lot for that weather, Lee. I'm Pretty excited for that warm weather and not really ready for that snow quite yet. Well, we just want to give you a quick reminder that the NAU men's basketball team is getting ready to tip off here at 630. They are hosting Sacramento State. That's down at the walk-up Sky Dome on the NAU campus. If you guys can't make it, you can just stay tuned right here on Channel 4 or 104 after our newscast. Again, that tip-off is at 430. But that's going to do it for us here tonight at NAZ Today. You can join us tomorrow night, same time, same place. Have a good evening.